the Uncover Dish Christian Leadership Podcast. The podcast that uncovers stories, equips leaders, and changes the world. This is episode 19 of the Uncover Dish Christian Leadership Podcast, the podcast that uncovers stories, equips leaders, and changes the world. And we are your hosts, James Lee. And Caitlin Deal. And today we are talking about growing volunteers and lay leaders in your church. And today we have Jewel Nelson. She is the Director of Leadership Development here at Greater New Jersey. And welcome. We are so excited to have you part of the GNJ family and here on the podcast. Uh, can you tell us a little bit first about your journey to your ministry? Yeah, how, how'd you how'd get you here? Get here? <laughs> how did I get here? Oh, well, my journey to the ministry uh, began with a call to ministry when I was about 13 years old. And I felt uh, the Spirit say that you're set apart for something special. Mm. And uh, in that time, you know, I was highly active in youth group and other things. And then as I went to college and I went to a Jesuit university that really uh, had a lot of service and faith involved together, and it was cemented the idea that I was to be a pastor. And then I went to Princeton Theological Seminary and I just knew that this was right. When I left seminary, I, I got the call for an appointment by Bishop Devonar uh, to Dingman's Ferry United Methodist Church, and it's in Pennsylvania. And I was like, oh, in Pennsylvania? <laughs> and it was absolutely amazing and awesome opportunity to be there. And then I served in Franklin Lakes United Methodist Church and just finished Sekasana United Methodist Church, so serving as a pastor. So what brought you here to the conference, to Greater New Jersey? Right. So I see that, you know, lady development and clergy development is essential in the vitality in local churches. Pastors can't do it all. Pastors shouldn't do it all. Right. One lady in the church cannot be the whole ministry of the church. And the idea is that we need to develop both our call in ministry, whether it's a lady call or a clergy call, but also develop skills that lead the church of today and the church that is going to be tomorrow. Your position as the leadership, you know, the director of leadership development is a brand new position in, in Greater New Jersey, right? So before the Connectional Ministries team was consisted of the five areas of vitality. Right, so we had the worship, the small groups, new disciples, missions, and stewardship, and now we have leadership development. So, where where does uh, leadership development kind of add to what's already there uh, in terms of our mission to recruit and develop transformational leaders? Leadership development is is a key for growing vitality in a church and also in the conference. So in our last strategic plan, we saw that we grew in the areas of small groups. We saw growth in mission. We saw growth in new disciples. We saw growth in mission giving. But we saw some areas that still are growing areas for us to really focus on, and one of them was leadership development. So the idea that the conference decided to say that this is a priority for us, for both clergy and laity. And so right now we're working on a laity development plan and also a clergy leadership development initiative as two parts of, of what I'm working with right now. Can you just, um, I'm looking more information maybe about the you know, what the lay members do. Like, what is leadership? Who is the leadership in the church? Like, as the lay leaders, like lay servants, like you hear all these mm -hmm. terms like thrown around and I'm not even sure what they all mean. So can you kind of give us a little breakdown of Wait, like the leadership? Is it lay leadership? servant di different from a lay leader? I don't even know. I think it is. <laughs> okay. So this is really, this is why you're here. You need to help us <laughs> clarify. What's, what's a lay leader? Right. <laughs> so, you know, a lay member, uh, to annual conference is someone that represents the congregation and they go to annual conference and and vote for that local church um, and represent them 
uh, a lay leader is someone in the congregation who serves in a variety of capacities and on a variety of committees, but is really that representation of the laity um, on those committees and also works very closely typically with a pastor on visioning, on planning, on worship design, really integral as they're bringing that voice of laity. Another term we use frequently in congregations is a lay servant. So some years ago, uh, it was called a lay speaker. Mm-hmm. And now there's this term lay servant. Oh, so those are the same. So they're interchangeable. Well, <laughs> or, somewhat or in our conference, in our conference uh, currently, there is still something called a, a called a lay servant, but real a lay speaker. But really, what we're focusing on is lay servant ministry. And what we're saying is speaking. that it's not just preaching. <laughs> right. Right, it's right, not right. just speaking. <laughs> but these lay servants serve in a variety of capacities. So some of them may have the gift in which to preach. Some of them may have a gift in which to teach Bible study. Mm. Some of them are are in the media design in churches. Some of them are working on church newsletters and websites. Um, others of them are working in the, the, the church office. Some of them are doing community outreach and organizing. So really celebrating the fact that lay servants are, are really integral in the life of the church and leading and equipping ministries. So, and then there's something called a certified lay servant. And certified lay servant takes an additional class um, beyond the lay servant ministry. And they are able to also serve and preach in other congregations. Mm. And then there's something called a certified lay minister which is a little bit different. So we're going up the tiers right yeah, now? Yeah, okay, kind okay. of, okay. kind of. But a certified lay minister, you need to be a certified lay servant first. Okay. And a certified lay minister goes through an extensive modules of classes, has background checks, um, and is approved at clergy session at annual conference each year. Oh, wow. They may be appointed to a church to serve in a in a pastoral role, but many of them serve within their local church or a neighboring local church in specific areas of leadership. Some of them are paid and some of them are unpaid. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So Mm -hmm. what's your role with working with all these different people in the congregation? So my role right now is particularly working with the conference. And what we're really working on right now is a lady development plan to really celebrate all these things that are happening with Lady in the in the church and all the opportunities that are available and being able to say, you know, what air, what what's the step from one to the next? How are we communicating this? How are we advertising this? How are we promoting this? Mm-hmm. And how can we even do that better? Right. And are there any areas of learning that with all these classes we're not touching upon? that churches and laity need to know being the church today. Mm. So that might be things like navigating change, you know, a cultural competence, um, you know, some of those things that, that, that would really be of value, you know, to the programming. Now there's an event coming up in September. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, so there is an event September, um, the Laity Academy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, September 9th. Nice. Yes. Right? Okay. September 9th. Uh, here at the Mission Resource Center, right. Neptune. So it's an awesome opportunity that laity who would like to come. Um, there are many tracks that are available for, for them to be involved in. And it's a day of learning and fellowshipping and celebrating so that they can go back to their local church feeling empowered mm-hmm. with some new skills and to be able to share with their local congregations. So we've been doing this for several years and it's grown and it's been a real blessing. So can you come back? So if you went last year, you can come back this year as well? Absolutely, yeah. So it's one one time event, but you can come back as much as you and like. It's a full day event. It's and registration is online. Through August 15th. Oh, it's not, not, not that many days left, so. <laughs> time so to get yeah, on that. register <laughs> uh, to be part of the you know, Lady Leadership Academy. Who should come to the Lady Leadership Academy? I think, it, I think anybody who would like to should. You know, but I think it's always important for for pastors to make the invitation mm. to a lay person mm. 
but it's also and sometimes even more powerful for a lay person to see another member of the church and say, wow, I see something special in you and you could truly benefit from that this. personal invitation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I often say, you know, how do you how do you know? I say someone once told me to look for bright eyed people. And the idea is a great people to ask is to look at those people in the congregation, in your small groups, in your church council and others who have those bright eyes, you know, for ministry. Um, and maybe those who just need something new to invigor invigorate them, you know, as, as they're leading. So this mm -hmm. might be a good event for somebody who might be considering maybe getting involved or going a step further and getting certified to kind of see what goes on. Yeah. And, and meet, meeting others, mm -hmm. absolutely, sharing stories. Yeah, I think it's very exciting that the conference is taking step towards training lay leaders in the church and saying that this is an important part of the church because I know from hearing stories in many small churches especially, the pastor, the clergy, is preaching, designing the worship, designing the websites. Right. Um, they're the music director there are some of them maybe even the, the occasional janitor like in small churches sometimes there's this sense that oh the pastor does everything because it is a small church i guess my question is why is it so common in the first place hmm. pastors are love jesus and love the church hmm. and sometimes we think that means well we we're going to be doing everything we have to say who can i empower to be a leader who can I invest in to do a ministry? So there are plenty of times where I've gone to a church and I've had to be the one to work on the website. I'm not gifted in website design. You know, it's not something that I particularly feel called to do. But sometimes as pastors, we find ourselves, you know, in that place where um, it's not getting done and we're just going to jump in and do it. And that might work for a certain amount of time, but ultimately it's not really a healthy model. The model is to say, who in the congregation may have a passion around this ministry? Because um, the ministry has to go beyond me as the pastor. You know, it's gotta be, it's gotta be tied to the congregation as a whole. And you're inviting people. You're not mm -hmm. telling them, you're no. not asking them and then moving on. You're inviting them. You're not saying you could do this. You're just come with me. Yeah, Let me show you. They're joining you on yeah. the journey. Mm -hmm. Like they're joining you and that's on the journey. Than an ask or a demand or a request. It they're is they're joining you. You know, and and what you're doing is that you're modeling leadership. Mm -hmm. Because the point is, is that someday, if that person does take over the website or the vacation Bible school or whatever that might be, that that person someday, before they're burnt out and had it, mm -hmm. has already identified someone who has joined them mm -hmm. in order to pass that on. As pastors, we have to ask what's next for us, but we have to help the lady ask what's next for them. Mm -hmm. And for them to move on to what's next, they have to equip someone to mm -hmm. be doing the vital ministry that they're involved in today. Mm -hmm. And that's important, not just to leave it, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, empty your hands from it and move on, but like you said, to equip the next person. Yeah. You know, and that's interesting because, you know, they are volunteers and, you know, there's always the question of how much time commitment or how much time we think they should invest compared to like what they can invest. So how would you kind of describe that? Is there like a time that you would say like, you know, you really should invest like two hours a week as a lay member or it's really up to, <laughs> I always think because if somebody comes to me like, oh, can you do this? I'm like, oh, I don't have time. You know, like time is like really precious, you know? Right. You know, so how would you approach somebody who's kind of like, I don't know if I have time. I want to do ministry. But I just don't feel like I have the time. Like, how would you express to the person, like, well, it's not that much time, or? Well, I think one thing, don't lie about the time that it mm -hmm. takes. Because that's some of the worst thing that we could do mm -hmm. when we invite someone to be a committee chair. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, this is easy. Don't worry about that's it. Like how and it's actually sometimes. a really yeah. big job, you right, know? Right. So I think don't be honest about mm -hmm. the time. But but the idea is that we need to we need to start nurturing people before they become committee chair people. So so the time may not be the time in being a missions chair. The time might be, Caitlin, would you help do the toy collection for Christmas? 
So you're committing to one task that has a beginning, that has an end, Mm -hmm. rather than trying to have that new person embrace being the missions chair. I think that's really important. Because that's overwhelming. I think that's where a lot of people start getting burned out or just getting frustrated and overwhelmed. So creating that small space, that small task, like you said, with the beginning and seeing the goal, Mm -hmm. seeing the end goal, I think is really important when you invite somebody in. Yeah, another yeah. aspect of that I've been um, realizing, so I've just been appointed to a church, and it it is so much easier when you do everything yourself, but to journey alongside a lay leader takes time. Time. You know? Like, say, for instance, I have time right now to make a, make a website in a few hours, but I want to bring someone alongside mm-hmm. me that means you're adding on a few extra hours to that process called website design, let's say. But it's worth it, right? But that's what I'm learning. It's, it takes more time to invest in other people, but it's that's what it is exactly. It's an investment. So how does a pastor begin to delegate ministerial responsibilities to volunteers? I think looking at what you do and say, what do I do well? What do I need to do? And what do I want to do? There's things that I want to do that I might not need to do, but I want to do them because I'm gifted in them, okay? Mm -hmm. Then there's things you have to do. Like, we need to get the church conference paperwork done, right? (laughs) Like, we have to do it. So, you know, there's certain things that you have to do. Mm -hmm. But then there's there's a lot of things that we do that may not be, that that doesn't have to be us being the driving force. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be, but it is. Mm -hmm. So I think the first step is making a list and then say, who in the congregation do you think can do some of these things, maybe 70% as well, and then inviting them to, to meet with you and to journey with you to, to be an apprentice for you to be a mentor um, because it doesn't happen overnight. Let's say we're at 90% of being able to do something well. I didn't get to 90% today. I I got to it for for 10 or more years of ministry or life. And you got there because someone journeyed alongside you. So you have to have realistic expectations. Mm. You know that this didn't happen for you overnight. It's not going to happen for someone overnight. And sometimes you're really surprised because people approach something from a totally different perspective than you can and they're right on and you can release that ministry quicker so sometimes it's a longer process but sometimes it it really is quick and that person was just looking for the right thing to be involved in and if we're always involved and we're not seeking that, no one may ever raise their hand or have a conversation and say, hey, I'd like to get in on that Mm -hmm. because they view it as the pastor's job. Mm -hmm. Is there a point where you should reevaluate your lay members and leadership roles? What I mean by that is, you know, they're in this position for five, six, seven, eight years. Or 10, 20, 30 years. Is there a point where you invite somebody to join in on this journey with this person. Like, how do you encourage a person to kind of, this role isn't for you anymore, but here's another ministry we'd like you to be a part of. First it's thing, a touchy yeah, subject. Because, yeah. you, you know, you want to appreciate everyone, what everyone's doing, but there is a point where it's time. Right. I think, you know, the idea is that we work in committees, so there should be a team of people that's working with them, that they're not like one-off ministries, mm-hmm. right? So usually it's a team. And you have the chance of nominations every year, going through the nominations process and, and meeting with them and saying who could be new on a committee or who could be a new committee chair. Um, and that doesn't mean that someone's not going that, 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 that doesn't happen in churches, but I think also to know the term limits for certain mm-hmm. committees. You know, for mm-hmm. staff parish, you can serve, you know, two, th- three year terms. Mm-hmm. And after that, you need to have a year off. Mm-hmm. So if someone has been on okay. staff parish for a really long time, 
then you know I think to to familiarize yourself with the book with the book of discipline. So there is like a year off they have to take after two or three years. Not not for every committee, okay. but for that one. Mm-hmm. So so some churches do actually enact um, some term limits. But I think if you're really saying that that we're looking for some new leadership, and even if there's someone who's passionate, you know, about it, I think the first thing is to celebrate that person's leadership in the church. Mm-hmm. You know, celebrating and giving thanks for what they've done for the past 5, 10, or 20 years. Mm -hmm. You know, acknowledging it and celebrating it. And then also inviting that person to mentor another person. Mm -hmm. The transition in ministry, I think, is really important and to do well Mm -hmm. for the vitality of a ministry Mm -hmm. going forward. Do we have resources? Um about like for you know chair people to transition like we have like clergy transition you know <laughs> but do we have like right. a transition like resources Transition workshop for, for lay people tra- yeah for lay chair. people when they transition into a new i know that's bringing in like a thousand people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so i mean so we don't have that type of transition but we do offer the foundational learning days or back mm-hmm. to basics okay. different different regions Mm -hmm. call them different things so you know but what it is it's a time for someone who said yes to serving on a committee to come and to learn about what the committee work does Mm -hmm. so that they leave uh, uh, this event which is typically in the new year January February feeling empowered to go back to their congregation with some working skills (laughs) you know (laughs) what I mean before they say (laughs) terrified one or the other you know Um, and okay. and we do have um, a wonderful guide for uh, for lay ministry that's put out every year. So we're we're putting together the new packet of information that talks about you know each committee in the church and how and what's its role and things. Yeah. And Rosa, our the lay leader of our conference, is the one that gathers this information every year, mm-hmm. and that's made available. So the the other event that we that we are working on is the uh, for new cross-cultural appointments, mm-hmm. uh, cross-racial or cross-cultural appointments. We're having a training here hosted by, um, by G Corps uh, on September 23rd. And those churches that have received a cross-cultural or cross-racial appointment have been invited uh, to, to register in order to attend. Wow, you've been busy only a month in, and you have all these events. We got you working hard, girl. So, <laughs> So mm-hmm. just to clarify, so your role is like not just lay leaders, but you're also going to be in the clergy leader, leaders development. Oh, see, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, 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 so yeah. So another um, part is is clergy development. When I was ordained, and you've had a candidacy mentor, then you had a clergy mentor, then you were part of RIM, then you were pro- and you were provisional, then you're ordained, and there was this feeling, I've arrived, or. Mm. But it, what, what I was asking myself was, what's next? Right. Because you had been so part of a process. And as much as I felt celebratory of this ordination, it was this sense of, well, what's next? Right. And so, you know, the conference is saying that we need to provide some structure for pastors who want to engage in what's next right you know Mm -hmm. so part of that has been coaching and has been pace and there's also team vital and then there's also some new things that are going to be rolling out and one of them's the clergy leadership development initiative what is your dream when it comes to lay leaders throughout the conference like you're here in this position and you're resourcing leaders you say this is what i would like to see lay leaders in our churches in 10 years? It's going to be robotic. Okay, I think it's going to be technology. <laughs> Automation. <laughs> That's what we're going for. Yeah. <laughs> we have self-driving cars. We should have uh, self, <laughs> self-operating lay leaders. Yeah. <laughs> the church is not the pastor. The church is not even those in the sanctuary. But the church is also the community that we would as a conference and as a church resemble the community in which we live and that the gospel is being translated today into the communities that we live in because part of me would want to say that pastors would be out of business 
Like that. I mean, not that I want that. I I don't know that this should make the cut, but the idea that we would empower ladies so much, yeah, that 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 they are leading and doing church. I always had that theological struggle, if you will, of what's the difference between clergy and laity, and why clergy is so set apart. I I understand that there there right. are places, but at the same time, if you think of the church as a whole, is it really that? Somehow these people are set apart to be more holy or more Christian or more closer to Jesus. I don't think so. I think every single person is called to be a royal priesthood, right? Yeah. Um, that That is within every uh, Christian, that call, that the church is wherever any Christian goes. Yeah, and I think it's when we say it's the body of Christ, that it's not that the eye is more important than the hand. Right. Or that the foot is more important than the arm. Mm -hmm. You know, that every part of the body has a purpose. And the idea that clergy have a purpose in the church and laity have a purpose. And the idea is that if if we if we we are essential to the whole body. Yeah. To be functioning, Mm -hmm. you know, right. Yeah. I think that's very clarifying that clergy are a necessary part of the church, but also very humbling in that clergy can't be the church by clergy self no so no amen amen to that all right okay you, so you want to do it i want to I'll, do it, do it? I'll do it. All right. so we have one last question that we ask all of our guests that's not on any sheet of paper <laughs> um <laughs> so if you can have a choice of one food no what is it no alteration no variation no variations breakfast lunch and dinner so one food item for the rest of your life what fruit. Would it be? I like fruit. You are the healthiest person we've had on the podcast. Fruit? I like so fruit. you'll have fruit, but be a little more specific. Like what kind of like, I like one dish? Like one. I no. like I like mangoes. Okay. I like watermelon. I like fruit. You're like the healthiest. We have so like pizza, a of, bread. A platter of mangoes and watermelons, <laughs> breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and for the rest of your life. I I like fruit, but like my. Like I do love pizza. I do like chicken <laughs> pie. No, I make actually. I make homemade pierogies at Christmas time. Oh wow! I make like three hundred and fifty in a day. And you bring four some different times, four different kinds. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that I like, but um, I'm on kind of like a health kick for the last like year and a half. Okay. And so maybe that's where the fruit comes in. <laughs> no, I like fruit. So Sounds fruit. like my daughter. She had mango and watermelon every day. She'll be she's she's happy. Yeah, she's a happy if somebody camper. can cut it up for me, then I'll be happy. <laughs> mango. <laughs> like yeah, when I'm home, like it sits maybe, there maybe whole on my table. My daughter I'm like, because I, I, I cut it up for her. So <laughs> if somebody little like cubes, put yeah. in front of me, that would probably be my favorite too. <laughs> I'll find pictures later. But my daughter, she loves watermelon. That she would eat it all the way to the white. It's mm-hmm. like white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. No pink left. Me too. And I'm like, who, where did she get that from? I don't do that. Yeah. I'm a t- I, I felt so guilty. But yeah, watermelon and mangoes it is. All right. Thank you again, Jewel, for being on the show. Again, that was uh, Jewel Nelson. She is a uh, director of leadership development here at the Mission and Resource Center. You could reach her at jnelson at gnjumc.org. Is that is that right? Amen. Yes, I, I, I memorize emails. That's what I do. <laughs> and uh, please register for the Lady Leadership Academy uh, at gnjumc.org. That's on September 9th? 9th. S- September 9th on Saturday. All day long. It's a great time for your lady to be trained and equipped uh, and to celebrate. Better, celebrate and do wonderful ministry in your local church. So please register and uh, we hope to see you around. Thanks, Jewel. Thanks, Jewel. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again for tuning in today's podcast. If there are any topics you'd like us to uncover or any comments for us, you can email them to podcast at gnjumc.org. We will be posting a new podcast every other Wednesday. So if you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to give us a five-star rating on iTunes and subscribe to be up to date on the latest episodes. We'll talk to you soon.